So we've already talked about shotguns and snipers, the next most requested special weapon type was fusion rifles. Now I am redoing this video, I did it on stream yesterday, but I, I, I wasn't really happy with the results. So uh, I decided to go take a deeper look at the scoring and uh, really, really iron out all the kinks that I thought were necessary. Uh, starting with, let's talk about weapon function for fusion rifles, because that is going to be important when I talk about scoring and you're going to start to understand why I weighted points a lot more differently with fusion rifles compared to shotguns and snipers. So first, fusion rifles, I would say, have two primary functions, right? You have non-swap full commit damage. So stuff like bait and switch rotations, rocket rotations, not really appropriate for fusion rifles for the most part because switching just incurs so much damage loss from having to wait through the charge time and the swap time. But uh, we're talking non-swap full commit damage, uh, you know, stuff like the Aramite, uh, if I can find it, stuff like the Aramite, you know, it's great for that. You just kind of have a really, really big mag. You just dump your reserves straight with one weapon, right? That's the, that's the first concept. The second concept is utility. Utility, I mean, the classic is Riptide, classic example. You want, uh, you know, fast charge time. You want stuff that can freeze, stuff that can maybe jolt, um, stuff that can give you ability energy back, uh, and stuff that's good for bursting majors, more importantly. So perks like Reservoir Burst come into play there because you may not have many of those Reservoir Burst shots depending on your role, but if you have just one or two, or even just one, it's good enough to deal with a major in most activities, especially lower level content where the enemies are not as tanky and the low damage of fusion rifles doesn't matter as much. So I hope it's pretty clear what you know the function of a fusion rifle is in today's sandbox. It's definitely kind of rough around the edges, not as clear as something like a sniper or a shotgun, but uh, that is kind of my opinion on what is a fusion rifles function in, in the season 22 sandbox. So let's go over scoring. Uh, scoring is definitely very weird, but we're gonna go over it. So uh, first we have archetype. So archetype is actually less important on fusions than it is on most special weapons. Uh, it's probably the least important. The differences between the worst and best archetype are actually very minimal. So what I've done here is I've given um, I've given rapids and high impacts a score of one, adaptives a score of 0 0.5, and precisions a score of zero. So when it comes to uh, DPS, fusions kind of have three families. There's high damage, medium damage, and low damage. That's what I'll call them, okay? Rapids are in the high damage category. They do 70k DPS sustained approximately with a 15% damage perk, okay? High impacts and adaptives do around 65k with high impacts trending towards 66, 67, adaptives being around 64k. And then finally, we have precisions. Precisions do around 60k. So they're the low damage class. Uh, in terms of total damage, rapids, adaptives, and precisions all do around 1.6 mil. So rapids are 1.5, adaptives 1.6, precisions are 1.65, and then high impacts are above them all at 1.8 mil. So you can see why I decided to score things the way I did. High impacts have highest total damage and similar DPS as rapids. So them and rapids both share the top tier. And then adaptives are a step under. They do around like slightly less than high impacts, but they do less total damage. And then precisions, they do, you know, less DPS and slightly total, you know, around the same total damage as uh, rapids and adaptives, but just the lowest DPS by a fair margin. So that's why I scored them the way I did. Now there is a caveat here, right? And that is rapids, I've given them plus 0.5 score if I've determined them to be utility fusion rifles, because utility fusion rifles, especially chill clip fusions, um, they have benefits from fast charge time. You don't want to be sitting there with a high impact level of charge time uh, just to, you know, stun an overload or something like that, right? Or to freeze an enemy. So, and on that note, I've also subtracted one full point from high impacts that are deemed to be specifically only utility fusion rifles. So if a high impact fusion rifle uh, is only, for example, like our Vandal, this is pretty much the only fusion rifle that affects, uh, our Vandal FR6 doesn't have any damage perks. It just has chill clip notably. So that would make it a specifically utility fusion rifle. So I had to dock a full point from it because it's just unwieldy to use in typical roam content where you want a utility fusion rifle for chill clip, even if it has a decent archetype, right? So that's how I scored archetypes. Um, now you might be wondering, you know, why is it only 0, 0 0.51? Um, the way I've kind of rationalized this in my head is the fusion rifle archetypes only have about 8% of difference between that low and medium and that medium and high family. And uh, if we look at something like a damage perk, a damage perk like Vorpal does 15% more DPS, right? And I've given that one point. So the difference between, for example, a precision 
and a rapid in terms of dps is about the same as having vorpal right so i've scored that you know kind of equivalently right i've, I've scored that kind of equivalently and i've also taken into a uh, into account if you have uh, a utility fusion rifle you would want that to be rapid and you wouldn't want it to be high impact for example so that's kind of how i've dealt with archetype uh, same thing with affinity affinity fusion rifles are not really great dps weapons and so as a result i haven't punished fusions for not surge matching stuff like apex as much i've just given solar 0 0.5 and everything else i've given zero so it's almost not a difference it's a small consideration but it is there nonetheless worth mentioning okay perks perks were definitely a complicated beast but we're going to talk about them in four categories we have ammo we have reload we have utility and we have damage Ammo is referring to stuff like lead from gold and field prep. Obviously, fusions don't have triple tap and fourth times, so I didn't think that um, the ammo perks were super important. If fusions ever got the equivalent of, you know, triple tap or fourth times, I might add uh, some more points here. But for now, ammo is getting 0 0.5, 0 0.5 points for any ammo perk that is distinguishable. Uh, reload perks. Now, reload perks are a little bit more diverse. I decided to give overflow perks two points because they're that important on fusions. Fusions have you know, some of them have pretty small mags. And on top of that, some of them have perks that require you to fire, you know, consecutively, repeatedly in order to get the maximum effectiveness out of them. For example, Chill Clip wants you to be above half your mag. So if you've overflowed your mag, that's great. Uh, you know, Reservoir Burst, Controlled Burst, these are perks that want you to be either above your full mag or consistently firing uh, consecutively, right? So those perks I've given them two because that's a big increase in DPS for uh, damage perk synergy. Auto loading holster, I've given it one because it's, it's, you know, it's helpful, but it's not as good as something like reconstruction, for example. And finally, other perks like slideways and subsistence slide shot, I've given those 0.5 because they reload only a small portion of your mag and require you to do some sort of movement in order to reload them where you're not really firing. Okay, so that's reload perks. Uh, let's talk about utility perk next. Uh, utility perks. So utility perks include chill clip, demo, and volt shot. That's pretty much it. Uh, chill clip obviously pretty important i've given that a point value of one and demo and volt shot especially nerf volt shot not as important we're going to give those 0.5s okay uh let's look at damage damage fusions have a, a fair number of damage perks uh controlled burst i've given two points to because it is essentially a 33 percent dps increase which is very very good uh, in terms of fusion rifle perks as far as they go and it doesn't cost anything besides just shooting and even after you dip under your final mag or you dip under your mag count it's still going to be active whereas something like reservoir burst is going to fall off after you dip below your final mag okay reservoir burst on the other hand uh, i've given 1.5 points because i think it's a solid damage perk but it requires the condition of having an overflowed reload uh like an overflowed reload perk like reconstruction or something like that and then it also requires, uh, sorry, it doesn't require. Uh, it's also good at being a utility perk because of that explosion that it has. So that's why I've given it 1.5, one for being a kind of a damage perk, 0 0.5 for kind of being a utility perk as well. Um, regular damage perks like Vorpal, Frenzy, High Impact, etc., etc., or not High Impact, Vorpal and Frenzy, pretty much. I've given those a point value of one. Like I mentioned before, they're around 15%. That's, you know, a point value of one. And then surrounded, cornered, and high impact reserves. Surrounded and cornered, I've given them 0 0.5 points each uh, because they're situational. High impact reserves is something like a 10%, 8% damage perk. Uh, so I've given it a 0 0.5. And finally, if you have no damage perk whatsoever, I've subtracted a point because um, that should be a an apt punishment uh, for not having a damage perk. Not having a damage perk is actually quite important on fusions because the archetype difference is very small and um, you really need to make good use of the ammo that you have it's not like something like Supremacy where Rewind 4 times a charm will, will save your bacon. Uh, that sort of thing doesn't really exist on Fusion Rifles. You need a damage perk uh, or else you are going to be caught lacking in terms of viability. Okay, um, as usual for perks, if uh, I'm, I'm ranking them by their distinctness. So for example, if you have Vorpal and Frenzy, you're only going to get one point because you're only going to use one or the other. Uh, they're not considered like alternatives to each other. They fill the same role um or not alternatives but rather different options i should say um if you have frenzy and high impact reserves why would you ever use high impact reserves frenzy is just better or vorpal is just better so you don't get points for having high impact reserves that way we're not rewarding unnecessary perk diversity but we are still rewarding when fusions have legitimately different options for a damage perk okay finally competition you guys are familiar with this already if you're best in slot you get a two if you're an alternative you get a one and if you're not even worth considering you get a zero a fat big donut okay 
So that is pretty much it for uh, scoring. So let's get on with the tier list itself. Uh, I've made some changes to uh, how I'm gonna kind of talk about the tier list, which should hopefully make things a bit better. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if we look at our tier list, we're gonna go alphabetically, and I've actually sorted these alphabetically, so I don't have to like, keep looking at my spreadsheet uh, while I'm talking. But um, let's uh, let's start with our Vandal FR6. So our Vandal FR6, this thing is a high impact stasis fusion, and uh, it's it's notably a reconstruction chill clip fusion. So it does have sub and slide, and it also has demo, but you're not really going to be using those perks for the most part. So we can kind of summarize this fusion rifle by saying it's a high impact stasis fusion, and it has a reconstruction chill clip. Now that being said, notice how this thing has no damage perks. So this thing is basically going to be explicitly, explicitly a utility fusion. And because of that, uh, it is going to be punished because it's a high impact, right? You're waiting through almost a full second of charge time just to get one chill clip shot off. Uh, you're going to be much better off looking at something like Riptide than something like this. So as a result, I've docked a fair number of points from this guy. We're going to put it in the C tier. Okay, next up, we have Burden of Guilt. Burden of Guilt is an adaptive stasis fusion, so a slightly better archetype utility wise. But what does it have in store for us? It has pretty much nothing good in the first column. It has high impact reserves, chill clip, and vorpal. So really, we're just looking at chill clip and vorpal here. And if we're looking at chill clip and vorpal, this thing has no reload perk. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the C tier as well. Uh, it's kind of in a similar spot as, uh, you know, our Vandal. It has better charge time, but it has no good reload perk to synergize with chill clip. And so we're going to put it in the C tier. Next up, we have Cartesian. This one's a fan favorite. Cartesian coordinate is a rapid fire energy. Uh, it's a solar fusion rifle. Uh, and this thing has pretty much one notable role. It has lead from gold and vorpal. Slideways is not super helpful given that this thing is not a utility fusion rifle. You're going to be reloading the whole mag and not just sliding with it. And high impact reserves is obviously just worse than vorpal in this case. And, you know, I'm also, I didn't mention this, but I'm not really counting Grave Robber as a fusion reload perk here because uh, fusions don't really synergize that well with melee builds. They're not like shotguns. So I haven't really given them any, any purchase here. So the main thing here is lead from gold vorpal. This thing is basically just a DPS fusion rifle, not a utility fusion rifle at all. Um, and because of that, I've given it a solid A tier. It's individually strong. It has one specific role that it's really good at. If we ever get a rapid fire solar fusion rifle with like controlled burst and uh, a better reload perk, uh, it would definitely be up somewhere in the S tier. But for now, Cartesian is gonna have to settle for being in the A tier. Okay, next up, Coriolis Force. Um, I said this in the in the other take of the video, but Coriolis Force is probably the only weapon that I've ever seen get a negative score using my scoring system. This thing has a negative 0.5. I mean, um, I, I could show you the perk pool, but I'd be probably just wasting your time. Coriolis Force is an aggressive void fusion rifle. Uh, it's the only fusion rifle in the game with the aggressive frame, which means it shoots a horizontal, a horizontal volley, as it says, uh, which is really bad since most enemies in Destiny are vertical. They stand up. Um, <laughs> and this thing has no perks. It has it has slideways. It has slideways, and it's in the wrong column too. So this thing is this thing is pretty bad. I'm just gonna save you the time putting D tier. Let's move on. Okay, next up we have Deliverance. So Deliverance is a stasis uh, precision fusion rifle. So it is the worst archetype, but it does have some saving graces. Uh, it's got some good utility perks. It's got demo and chill clip, and of course it has uh, cornered and surrounded as well. Um, that being said, you're not really going to use a precision fusion rifle for uh, surrounded DPS. I'm not sure why you, why you do that. It's a bit silly. Um, but besides that, yeah, it has demo chill clip and it also has bait and switch for a regular damage perk. So what do I think of this thing? Uh, just based on the factors, I'm going to put it in the B tier, right? This thing is not really a, a damage fusion rifle by any stretch, mostly because of its archetype. Uh, and it's also, um, you know, demo chill clip is fine. But uh, precision frames have, you know, moderate to long charge time and uh, stuff like Riptide, not to spoil anything, but Riptide exists further down the list. And if you want a utility fusion rifle, I would argue Riptide is a better choice in general. Uh, so let's keep going. Uh, we've got Dreambreaker next. Dreambreaker, this one's kind of underrated, I think. This one's a moon, uh, moon. This is a moon fusion. Uh, it is an adaptive solar fusion rifle. So it's the, you know, second best kind of class of archetype for damage. And um, this thing has got lead from gold and it's got slideways, and it's got frenzy, high impact, surrounded, and cornered. But you know, we're gonna ignore cornered because it's not in the right column. So um, yeah, this thing's not bad. It's basically a, um, you know, second class archetype, pretty decent perk fusion rifle. Uh, you're not gonna be using this thing for utility, but uh, it's certainly decent for damage. And so as a result, I'm gonna put this thing in the B tier. I'm gonna put this thing in the B tier. Uh, we're gonna put it above Deliverance in terms of viability. That is where I think it goes. It's basically like a Cartesian. It's like a Cartesian, right? It's a. It's basically a Cartesian. 
uh, similar DPS, uh, and um, yeah, just more perk diversity and uh, slightly more total damage. That's basically it. Okay, Exile's Curse. Exile's Curse from Trials of Osiris. This is an Archive Impact. Um, and this thing has Slide Shot and Vorpal. That's pretty much it. I mean, it has high impact, but we're not going to mention that. Slide Shot and Vorpal are the name of the game for this guy. Uh, Slide Shot's not really a good perk to use with uh, raw damage perks like Vorpal. It's more like a, a perk you'd want to use with like Chill Clip or Res Burst. And this thing has neither of those things. Uh, so this thing basically explicitly lays itself out as a damage fusion. And as a damage fusion, it's not very good. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the C tier. Uh, I'm gonna, probably going to put it right over here. I think it's probably less useful than a Burden of Guilt. It's probably right about here. Okay, moving on. We have Glacioclasm. Glacioclasm from the Dawning. Uh, this thing has had a couple versions, but we're going to use the most recent one for all uh, guns that have multiple versions. Uh, this thing has Slide Shot, Subsistence, Reservoir Burst, and High Impact Reserves. So as a result, this thing kind of chalks itself up to be uh, both a uh, utility fusion, right, because of Reservoir Burst and Slide Shot, stuff like that, but it also can double as a damage fusion which with a mid perk in High Impact Reserves. So not too bad, not too bad. Uh, Glacial, we're gonna put in the B tier. We're gonna put in the B tier. Uh, I think it's somewhere around here. Yeah, I think it's it's similar viability to, to these fusions. I think it belongs right in the middle of B tier. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for Glacial Plasm. Let's go to Hollow Words. Hollow Words is up next. So, Hollow Words, this thing has Lead from Gold, Slideways, Vorpal, and Surrounded. Uh, I think those are the major perks that roll with this thing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yep, that is correct. And uh, like I said, it is an arc precision frame fusion rifle. Uh, this thing, you know, bad archetype, mid affinity, not great. Um, and it's got, you know, it's it's got decent perks, right? It's got okay perks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the C tier. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the C tier. Uh, where it sits in the C tier, I believe it sits uh, somewhere around here. That's not the right fusion rifle. What am I doing? This fusion rifle right here. I think I just took Snorri from like the bottom of the list by accident. Hold on, let's put that back in the order so we're, we're nice and alphabetical squared away. All right, um, so that was Hollow Words. Let's go to Iota Draconis. Iota Draconis, this thing is a high impact solar fusion rifle and it has lead from gold. It has cornered in the wrong column. It has frenzy and it has high impact reserve. So we're basically just looking at a lead frenzy high impact solar, which is not bad, right? It's not bad. Uh, no good reload perks. Um, and no controlled reservoir, so that's going to knock it down a few pegs, but it is, I think, a B-tier fusion. I think it's a B-tier fusion. I think it sits right next to Glacio. That's a good spot for it. Um, let's go to Iterative next. Iterative Loop. Now, Iterative Loop was all the rage for a while because for a short time, it was the only fusion rifle in the game, especially a Rapid, that could roll Volt Shot. And unfortunately, Volt Shot has been nuked ever since the Dolt changes. So Volt Shot is not really a super relevant utility perk anymore, but I have still given it a small amount of points for having Volt Shot. It's also notable for having the Nanotech Tracer Rocket's uh, origin trait, which does increase its damage a small amount. Um, so I've given it a couple, you know, half a point for that as well. Um, and it's, that's also saved it from being classified as not having a damage perk. So because of that, uh, this thing is basically just strictly a utility fusion. Um, decent for bursting down majors, you know, has Volt Shot, has Demo, has Lead, and uh, it has Nanotech Tracer as well to help it out. Um, we're going to go ahead and put Iterative Loop in the B tier. I think it's pretty much right next to Deliverance in terms of viability. Uh, they're both, uh, you know, fusion rifles that have been overshadowed by others in terms of utility, um, and their roles are just kind of mediocre, right? They're just okay. Uh, likely Suspect. Okay, Likely Suspect has pretty much nothing interesting to look at, but we're still going to look at it anyway. It is a rapid fire uh, void fusion rifle from the Witch Queen Throne World drops, and uh, it's craftable and it has um, slideways and no good damage perk. So it has it has slideways. That that's that's pretty much it. So we're gonna put it in the D tier. No no further questions. Um, let's go to loaded question next. Loaded question, beautiful beautiful loaded question. This thing Nightfall drop came out recently in its newest form, and uh, it's got a pretty stacked perk pool. It's got auto overflow. Envious, Demo, Controlled, and it's got Reservoir, and we're going to kind of ignore Frenzy because Controlled exists, right? So this thing's got a lot of good perks going for it. If this thing was solar and craftable, it would be probably the best fusion rifle in the game in general. Um, but that being said, it is Arc, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's got all the right perks, all the right places, doubles as a utility and a damage fusion rifle in both instances. So um, yeah, I think it's solidly deserving to be in the S tier. Uh, loaded question is out and main ingredient is in. They're both Vanguard looking fusion rifles, which is kind of interesting. They're right next to each other. But what do we got for main ingredient? 
Main ingredient is a precision frame arc fusion rifle, so no points in affinity and archetype. And this thing has auto high impact. I think that's the only perks. Uh, yeah, that's the only perks that are really <laughs> worth looking at here. And um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put this thing in the D tier. I think uh, it's gonna be right over here. Yeah, auto high impact precision fusion rifle is uh, definitely better than likely suspect and Coriolis, but definitely not deserving to play with the boys up here. All right, Midas Reckoning. Now this one's kind of a sleeper pick. Uh, I think you guys are gonna be surprised by how high I place this. But Midas Reckoning is a arc fusion rifle from King uh, from King's Fall, and uh, it has cornered surrounded which is, this is probably the best fusion rifle for cornered surrounded if you're doing surrounded DPS with a fusion, um, which, you know, like I said earlier, deliverance fails at this measure, but this fusion rifle being a high impact benefits a lot from cornered and uh, it has enhanced surrounded as well. So that's that's really good for that combo. Uh, it's got field prep and it's got reservoir burst and it's got Vorpal. Now, normally I would have mentioned Vorpal in this company, but Vorpal is kind of the best general damage perk for this fusion rifle. Uh, Reservoir isn't as good because you do have runneth over which is kind of like intrinsic overflow But it's not enough to really keep reservoir uptime as high as you would on something like an envious fusion, right? So we're gonna say Vorpal is worth considering as well on this fusion with like field Vorpal um, That being said, right? Let's take a look at how this thing factors in the grand scheme of things So like I said field prep runneth over cornered surrounded Vorpal reservoir and this thing can fit in both the utility and the uh, damage purposes. I would say this thing is probably the best utility high impact, uh, just because run it over is basically, if you're in a team setting, it's a guaranteed overflow, and you only need a couple shots in utility fusions, generally speaking, uh, to have reservoir before moving on to the next enemy. So I'm gonna put Midas Reckoning solidly in the A tier. Uh, I'm actually gonna put it above Cartesian in terms of viability. Um, Although they definitely belong in the same tier, they definitely belong in the same tier. Uh, you're and now you might be shocked to see that you know Cartesian is worse than this fusion rifle in viability, in my opinion, and that is strictly because Cartesian is not best in slot. And we're gonna get to what is best in slot for Cartesian's role in a second. Okay, so now that we're done talking about Midas Reckoning, let's talk about Nox Perennial Five. Nox Perennial Five. Nox Perennial Five. One of the only two strand fusion rifles in the game, and certainly the only strand high impact. Uh, this thing kind of flew under most people's radars, but this thing has the Aramite God Roll in the same frame, and it's got uh, Envious Controlled, and it's got Lead, right? The rest of the perks are pretty much uh, non-starters, but these three perks alone are very good. They're very good, and if you ever need a Kinetic Slot Fusion Rifle for damage, uh, this one's the best one. This one is the best one. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing in the A tier. This thing is solidly at the top of A tier. Uh, the only thing holding it back is that it doesn't have a uh, Reservoir Burst for utility options, and um, that's pretty much all that's holding it back. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Not a utility fusion rifle for sure. Definitely strictly for damage. But besides that, pretty solid. Uh, okay, Null Composure is next. Now, Null Composure is special because it is both a rapid fire frame and it also has Reservoir Burst, which is not something that any other fusion rifle can have the bragging rights to at this current time. So while the first column perks are very, very underwhelming, this thing does have Reservoir Burst and High Impact Reserves, two perks that are both alternative options. Um, that being said, if you have a rapid fire fusion with any competent damage perk, you're not going to be using this thing. But Reservoir Burst is still an option, and it's still rare to see a rapid fire. Well, this is the only rapid fire fusion with Reservoir Burst. Uh, for that, it gets uh, you know a couple points, and uh, we're going to put this thing solidly in the B tier. In the B tier, uh, I'm going to put it probably. Where should I put this thing? I'm going to put this thing right over. I think here. I think that is the correct placement for it. Yeah, that is the correct placement for it. Right over here. Uh, it's definitely a little bit more viable than iterative and deliverance in stuff like speedrunning. Um, mostly because of that, you know, that rapid first burst of damage from Reservoir Burst. That little bit of splash as well. It's definitely a unique thing to have. Okay, next up we have Plug One. Plug One. Classic, classic, classic. Nightfall Fusion. Now, this thing, unfortunately for it, it is a precision frame. Then precision arc. Fusion rifle and um the perks it's um not looking too good yeah they give it a bunch of perks that are like completely dead on fusion rifles right we've got adjunky we've got turnabout adaptive munitions like a compulsive yeah they were they were on they were off that zaza on this one so i mean this thing pretty much only has reservoir burst and cornered i'm not even going to mention compulsive as having synergy with reservoir it's just not even worth thinking about compared to something like auto loading or envious so uh we're gonna put this thing uh, no surprises, we're gonna put this thing in the D tier. In the D tier. Uh, yeah, it goes right over main ingredient, but I think we're gonna put this thing in the D tier. Okay, next up we have Pressurized Precision. Pressurized Precision is the other strand fusion rifle in Destiny 2. 
listening to the hit video game. And this thing is instead an adaptive frame and it rolls Discord, which uh, I'm going to give it points for as an ammo perk. Discord's a bit underrated on fusion rifles because fusion rifles are actually used for killing ads. Whereas um, I didn't really rate Discord on sniper rifles because you don't use snipers for killing ads for the most part uh, in ammo sensitive activities, at least. So I think Discord is decent on this fusion rifle. Uh, it also has auto loading and then it has high impact and vorpal and cornered in the wrong column. So we're basically looking at auto discord vorpal here, um, which is not bad, right? This thing is certainly not a utility fusion, I would say for the most part. Um, I'm gonna put it in the B tier. I'm gonna put it in the B tier. I'm gonna put it um, based on the scoring system. The scoring system put it like somewhere on here, I think, which I think is fine. I think it's fine. Uh, it's got a bit of an, a bit of a non-compete slot and uh, it's, uh, it's decent, you know, it's decent. Okay, next up we have Riptide. Okay, Riptide, this is a fan favorite. Riptide, Riptide, Riptide. This thing is the ultimate utility fusion rifle. It's rapid, which is the right frame, and it's got a boatload of decent perks for that purpose. It's got auto loading, it's got lead, it's got field prep, and then in the right column, we've got chill clip, we got frenzy, we got vorpal, we got demo, and uh, we have cornered, but also in the wrong column. So this thing has a lot of perks going for it, and it's rapid. Um, the only thing really missing is some solid damage perks, like controlled or something like reservoir. Um, that being said, I can't expect too much out of this fusion rifle. Uh, if we ever did get a rapid fusion rifle that got all that stuff, definitely would shoot up to the top of S tier. But for now, this thing is going to go in the bottom of S tier, where it rightfully belongs. Next up, we have Royal Executioner. Royal Executioner, where is, where is that guy? That guy's down here. Okay. Royal Executioner is an adaptive solar uh, craftable fusion rifle, and this thing has a couple good perks. It has lead, it has envious, and it has reservoir. Those are pretty much the important perks on this thing. Um, envious and reservoir being the stars of the show here. Uh, this thing is basically like Aramite light. Uh, I think a lot of people are letting this thing fly under the radar. Uh, it doesn't have controlled, but with uh, max stacking envious, using backup max swapping, or using ionized, this thing gets a lot of its reserves, if not all of its reserves, into its mag at once. And then you're having lots of fun just shooting reservoir shots over and over again at basically high impact levels of damage. So this thing is, um, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. Uh, it's not as good as Aramite, but it's, uh, if that's all you got, you know, it's not bad. So I'm actually going to put this thing solidly in the A tier. Um, where do we put it in the A tier? I think we put it, yeah, it goes right above Cartesian. Yeah, slightly above Cartesian in terms of viability, just because of having um, Envious and Reservoir instead of something like Lead Vorpal. Okay, next up, we have the Snorri, the Snorri FR5. Um, this thing is not too special, nothing too crazy. Uh, this is an open world drop, I believe, from Witch Queen, yeah. And uh, the only thing this thing has is um, Frenzy Reservoir Burst, yeah, and High Impact, I guess, but mostly just Frenzy Reservoir Burst. Nothing good in the first column, pretty bad archetype. And uh, as a result, uh, we're going to put this thing in the C tier. We're going to put this thing in the C tier. Uh, I think it goes, yeah, right by Exiled, Exiles Curse, yeah. No reload perk, but it can be used for, um, you know, Reservoir Burst and, and Frenzy shenanigans. Uh, but yeah, this is, I mean, I would say like the bottom two tiers, this might, this might say mostly usable, bottom two tiers you mostly just avoid, honestly. Uh, okay, next up we have Techian Force. Techian Force, this guy got a lot of attention when the Wish Reprise first came out with these new weapons that are craftable, and um, you know, for a decent reason, it has rewind and control, that's like the big, you know, big money perks on the, on per combo, I should say, on this weapon, and it basically just allows you to shoot your reserves indefinitely. Uh, which is pretty nice that being said this thing is not very versatile it doesn't have any utility perks right and um yeah this thing is basically just a rewind controlled machine uh it's got you know everything you would want uh it's just not a rapid and it's not a high impact and so you know it lost some points for that and it's not solar either um but that being said even with those points lost this thing landed itself solidly in the a tier solidly in the a tier and i believe it's right above royal executioner yeah right over here solid okay Next up, we have the Epicurean. The Epicurean is um, one of the worst, you know, PVE fusion rifles in the game. This thing is a precision frame, and it has no perks for PVE whatsoever besides corner. So, yeah, I'm gonna put this thing in the D tier. <laughs> I'm gonna put this thing in the D tier. Yeah, right where it belongs. Nothing special about this thing. Uh, if not, maybe like here. You know, it doesn't matter. I'll just, you know, put it in the D tier. Okay. Next up, we have a beast, a beast of a fusion rifle, and that is the Aramite. The Aramite is a high impact frame fusion rifle. It is solar, it is craftable, came out this season, and this thing has it all. It has Envious, it has Lead, right? So two solid perks in that column. It's got Cornered, don't really care, but it has Controlled and Reservoir. 
right? Controlled and Reservoir, it has the best general fusion DPS perk and the best general fusion utility perk that is available on a non-stasis fusion. And it has Envious and it's craftable Envious. You know, it's crafted Envious, enhanced Envious, it's got enhanced lead. This thing is a beast. We have no choice but to put it at the top of S tier. This thing has basically uh, subsumed Cartesian's role and Royal Executioner's role in terms of boss DPS for a fusion rifle. And um, it actually, you know, dips its toes in the water when it comes to being a utility fusion rifle as well, just like Loaded Question. So these two are basically two peas in a pod. This guy's craftable in solar. This guy's got some better perk diversity. But that being said, these two are absolute bangers. And that's why they are in the S tier. Uh, okay, we have four fusions left. Let's talk about Wizened Rebuke. Wizened Rebuke, again, another fusion rifle that has had a couple of versions. Uh, this one's from Iron Banner. And uh, this thing is a high impact, basically, with Volt Shot. I think it's the only other fusion that rolls Volt Shot besides Iterative. And it has Vorpal and High Impact. So we're basically just looking at Vorpal on this thing. I mean, Volt Shot is not really a consideration that much um, on a high impact. So um, we're going to classify this thing as an energy damage fusion rifle and just put this thing in the C tier. Um, I think it goes, if I'm not mistaken, scoring wise, yeah, it goes right next to Exile or Exile's Curse, I should say. Okay, next up, Trinary System. No, Timelines Vertex, Timelines Vertex. Apologies for the mix-up. Okay, Timelines Vertex, this thing is an adaptive solar fusion rifle, and it has lead field auto, absolutely solid first column, right? And then it has no damage perk. It has demo, it has demo. Everyone laugh at this man, it has demo, okay? I remember uh, I had a friend that used to use this thing in PvP a ton, uh, but you know, PvE-wise, who are we kidding here? This thing's gonna go in the C tier, right next to its friend Snorri. It's gonna go solidly in the C tier. Uh, next up, we have Trinary System. Trinary System is a Gambit fusion rifle. Now, let me just open both of these in new tabs. Okay, Trinary System. This thing has got auto, slide, and I think high impact, and demo. Yeah, that's pretty much it. No good damage perks, um, no super, super good reload perks, and it's an adaptive frame, so it's okay, right? And for that reason, because it's just okay, we're going to put it in the C tier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it right over here, right over here, next to our friend uh, Hollow Denial. They have similar scores, Hollow being a precision and Trinary being an, adapt an adaptive with Trinary having slightly worse damage perks. Okay, finally, last fusion rifle. This guy's probably going to get a rework. Let's pray it gets a good reload perk and envious, uh, not envious, a good reload perk and reservoir burst or control burst. That would make this thing a, a solid, it would, it would make it a banger, right? It's a rapid fire frame. Uh, but that being said, this thing's a void rapid from Garden of Salvation and it gets auto high impact. That's really the only relevant perk choices for PVE. So I'm going to go ahead and slap this thing in the C tier. We're going to slap it in the C tier. I'm going to slap it probably right over, um, right over here. Yeah, also Burden should be moved down. I just realized that. Sorry. I did not realize Burden is supposed to be down here. Yeah. Okay. I think that is our tier list. Uh, pretty solid tier list, I would say. This one might be the most controversial one yet, though, mostly because uh, I talk about, you know, certain fusions like Deliverance being B tier, um, certain fusions like, um, you know, these two being placed as high as they are, or people not recognizing some of the fusions in here. But I think I made a fair case as to understanding why fusion rifles are ranked the way they are in endgame PvE in this current sandbox. Uh, I think high impacts are underrated uh, for damage. They are the best damage fusion rifle type, in my opinion, at this current time in the current sandbox. Uh, I think Techian is a tad overrated. I think Deliverance is very overrated. Uh, I think Iterative is has fallen off. And um, I think the rest of my opinions I've made pretty clear, pretty clear. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments section. Uh, next up, I think we're doing grenade launchers, by the way. So look forward to that. And I'll give you a brief sneak peek of our scoring sheet, which you can see in the description. Uh, here is where you can see how I scored every single fusion. Uh, we have this is the S tier up here. And then, of course, you can see the A tier and the B tier, etc, etc. You can scroll down and you can see everything to your heart's content. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. I will see you guys in the next one where we talk about grenade launchers. And uh, yeah, see you guys later.